Good evening. If you do have a mobile, if you'd like to put it on silent, please. Thanks very much. Right, massive welcome back to Darren Diogi with Multidimensional Parasites, Politics and the Battle for Your Health and Power. Darren speaks on many subjects and tonight sheds light on our unwelcome and often unheard of tenants who pay no rent and make a right old mess. Virtually everybody has internal parasites ingested with food from poor hygiene and many other sources, invisible and for the most part painless. Unless evicted forcibly, they, they're here to stay eating our food, causing illness and leaving their waste products for us to shift. No benefit to us whatsoever. Researcher, lecturer, advocate of self-responsibility and family man Darren targets these opportunistic blighters, hopefully leaving nowhere for them to hide with remedies nature provides but which many are unaware. Please welcome Darren Diogi. Thank you, Rob. Thank you. Danny, is there any one of these I need to speak into in particular? Any of them? Okay. All right, as long as I'm upright, that's worked. That's fine. Okay. I'll try, I'll try and maintain that for the evening. If I uh, cease to be upright, then just call 999. Thank you. Okay. Good evening all. It's a great pleasure to be back here at New Horizon St Anne's. I, I can't remember how many times we've been here now. I think this might be five or six, I think. Five or six, yes. Yeah. So I come back about once a year and try to always bring something new and something you may not have heard of before. I know that uh, sometimes my talks can be considered heady by some, and today I'm going to try and, you know, manage that, <laughs> mitigate it somewhat. It'll be heady by the end, but uh, I'll try and keep it as accessible as possible in the beginning. Now, the idea of some kind of invader, be it parasitic, predatory or otherwise, is certainly no surprise to this group, I know. I'm not sure if that applies to every individual in this group, but certainly I know that this is one of the longest running groups of its kind in the country, and uh, there has been a strong kind of uh, flavour of everything from extraterrestrial to other sort of uh, um, sharings here taking place over the years. So when I'm talking about um, invaders of different forms, I know that many of you may have uh, heard many speakers talk about it before. But have you had anybody actually talk about the parasitic side of things before here? No. What about predators? Have you had people talk about... Because all life feeds on life. Is that news to anybody? No, because death can't sustain life. Okay, death can't sustain life. That's not a surprise, is it? So all life feeds on life. Even if it's vegetable life, it's still life. So everything feeds on stuff. And our culture has kind of fed into our minds the idea that we're at the absolute top of every chain going and that nothing feeds on us. And I think that's, that's very, very naive because medicine knows very well that many life forms feed on us, not just parasites like Rob mentioned, like worms or things like that, but also even viruses and bacteria. These also are, a form, are considered parasitic because they, they feed at our expense. Now, they, now, when most of us think of invaders in an alien sense, people think of big things about the same size as us that might have two arms and two legs. They might look grey or black or green or whatever colour they might be. But we all, you know, there's a, there's a kind of um, a confusion to do with stature and will there. Where we seem to equate size and power as uh, being related, when they're not related at all. Does anybody here have children? Anybody have children? Okay, so when they're young, they're not as big as you, but is their will equal to yours? It is equal to yours, isn't it? So the will is equal, though the stature is not. And the same applies to some of the organisms and life forms I'm going to be talking about tonight. And more than anything out of tonight, I'm not trying to impart any sense of fear-mongering or paranoia or even, or even conspiracy. What I'm trying to imply is uh, respect. You know, respect for our... The, the, almost like the, the arrogance and ambivalence of our species to think that we can wander around unscathed because we have a sense of self or that because we can tap consciousness or awareness or things like that. I think that actually, as we'll see tonight, makes us more palatable to some of the creatures that may choose to feed on life forms. You've had pe pe people you're talking about all sorts of alien life forms, haven't you? Have you had people talk about archons before? 
Yeah, I thought you would be. So most of you are kind of familiar with the idea of archons. Yeah, I'm not talking about them tonight. Okay? If anything, they could be considered a predator. You know, so they could be considered predatorial. We're not talking about predators tonight. We're talking about parasites. So the difference is a predator will seek to kill its prey long term. A parasite just seeks to keep it in a weakened state. But a parasite cannot live without its host. Can't live without it. So it needs you alive. Now, one of the trickiest things about parasites is one of the biggest aspects of tonight's subject is they, only, they, they can only survive in one way, and that is by tricking the host into thinking that its urges and needs are you. That its urges and needs are you, otherwise you wouldn't feed it. Okay, so all parasites operate in the same way, and that is they make the host think that the parasite is part of it. So mistletoe, everyone familiar with mistletoe? Mistletoe is a parasite. It cannot live by itself. It lives on other trees. But other trees feed it because they think the mistletoe is part of it. They think it's a branch or a leaf or something like that. Because otherwise it wouldn't give it any food. If a bird is sitting on a tree, the tree doesn't give it any sustenance. Or if, if leaves fall on it or anything like that, there's no sustenance passed over. Whereas parasites have some way of absorbing the, the, the life force or nutrients from the host. Now tonight, the particular types of parasite I'm going to talk about are what the shamans of ancient Mexico, according to Carlos Castaneda anyway, would call the topic of topics. The topic of topics. And that is that since time immemorial, something has been predating on humanity and has been doing it by tricking us into thinking that it is us. Or that we are it. So that when it is seeking to have its urges met, then we think that's our urges. And so we go and, you know, indulge ourselves or feed those urges, thinking it's us, and not realising that's not the case at all. Okay. So the idea of, as I said earlier, you know, predation or par parasitic action is it, probably not news to a group like this. But what I've always found when I've been to talks like that before is there's never any word on what can be done about it other than to tell people and make people aware. There's no actual strategy for how do we expunge or deal with these invaders, be they humaniform grey beings like us, or be they microscopic protozoa. There's never an actual strategy for what can we do as individuals or as a group that can tackle this. Well, tonight I'm not going to be in that school. I'm going to be giving you solutions to all of the things I'm going to present to you tonight. But I am going to be talking a bit about predators and a bit about parasites, but the focus is the parasitic aspect, because really, our world is being run by parasites at the minute. Absolutely run by parasites. It's incredible. And it's masquerading as us. So we think these are people feeding their urges or they're just dark people or indulgent people. And actually, as I'm hopefully going to paint the picture tonight, this is actually parasites tricking people into thinking that their hungers are theirs. Now, has anybody here ever come across worms in humans? Yeah? Okay. Um, does anybody want to share their experience? Does anybody want to say something about it? No? Did you, did, did you, was this, was it like worms in the family or, or while, while traveling or anything like that? Nematode worms. Nematode worms. 2000 infection. Okay. Uh, Cryptostrongulus pulmonae. Okay. Not supposed to infect humans. And how did it, how did it affect you? How did you feel? Chronic fatigue. Yeah. Um, fever. Yeah. How was your mood and motivation? Uh, bad. Yeah. yeah. Okay, these, these are, um, the, the impact of mood, energy levels, all the rest of it are standard, standard modus operandi across all parasitic infections. And there's more than 20 recognised by science that it regularly infect humans. And in fact, the World Health Organisation statistics are quite staggering on this. They reckon that at the minute on the planet, over 3 billion people are affected by parasites, just soil and waterborne. That doesn't include air or space-borne, and I'll come on to them later. So that's three billion people, that's almost half the population of the world, and most of them don't know it. 85% of all adults will experience parasitic infection at some point in their life, whether they're aware of it or not. In this country alone, it is a standard recognised fact that of all under 10s, children under 10s, 40% of all of them, at any given time, are carrying a parasitic infection in this country. 40%, that's almost half of all of our children, are carrying 
not just worms, but other things. That's, I think one of the problems with parasites is we've been tricked into thinking it means a worm. It doesn't just mean worms, it means all sorts of microscopic protozoa, bacteria, and other forms of nebulous, gelatinous things that seek to live in your gut. Now, the funny thing is, when we... Anybody here have dealt with addiction of any kind? Anybody here have been an addict, addicted to anything? Or anybody uh, got particular cravings? Have you ever experienced a craving for anything, be it sugar, chocolate, coffee, whatever? Where do you experience the craving from? Where is it? Where's the bit that asks for it? The gut. Yeah, the gut. The gut is where it comes from. The hunger is here. The agitation is here. It's in the gut because that's where these things live. They live in our gut. The urges and the agitation come from the gut because this is where these things reside. And we are tricked into thinking it's us. Now, I only came across this because I met the parasite that I'm going to be talking about tonight, the one that the Toltecs have been referring to. I think when I've spoken to you guys before, I've mentioned my Toltec background. I've been a, a, a living and practicing with Toltequity as a system for most of my adult life. I dropped talking about it publicly when I started talking about my other language stuff and the other people's public trust stuff that I've spoken about here before, so I haven't really spoken about my Toltec side ever. And tonight's going to be one of the first talks where I'll be integrating that into the talk because I, I just, it integrated itself in me when I discovered the parasite in me and realized this is what all my Toltec teachers have been talking about my whole life. And in fact, one very famous Toltec, Don Miguel Ruiz, actually refers to it as the parasite, and he calls it the parasite. But he, rec he, he refers to it in one particular um, aspect that we'll, we'll cover in a bit. Has anybody come across the work of Don Miguel Ruiz? And that is the Four Agreements, the Fifth Agreement, and uh, the Mastery of Love. I highly recommend his works. They're really accessible. They're not technical at all. And uh, they are all very much about arming you to deal with the parasite in one of the only ways that you can. And that is by building and establishing your own integrity. Now, do people know what integrity means? What does integrity mean? <coughs> Strength. Strength. I mean integrity like a building. It's like a building. It's the house of your, your, your awareness in your body. And it's the integrity of your body through conduct and through what you put in your body is what allows it to fight off and fend off the parasite. If you are in a weakened state by any means, then you are vulnerable and prone. And that's, when, that's where most of the world is at. This is why the part of the subject is the battle for your health and power, because they're directly related. Your health is the mechanism for the delivery of your power. If your body is not well, if you don't have energy, you don't have mood, you don't feel motivated, you can't get up or you don't feel good about yourself, how can you go and bring about the changes you aspire to, either in yourself or in the world? I know myself from having battled with the parasite and depression and low mood for many decades, I know you can't get much done. I certainly couldn't. I found that I was maybe able to deliver about 10% of what I aspired to because one morning I'd get up and be able to do something and the other nine I wouldn't. And we're battling with, does that sound anybody else here been familiar with that sort of battling themselves? Okay, so I was dealing with addiction, depression, low mood, all this sort of stuff for many, many years. I used all the health stuff to try and deal with it, and it wasn't until very recently that I discovered that it was, in fact, a parasite inside me. And what was very fascinating about it was that the way I came across it wasn't in my body. I met it in my mind. Okay, I met it in my mind. And that was why I called this talk Multidimensional Parasites. Because when most people think of dimensions, they think of, uh, I don't know, different galaxies or planets or perspectives of light or, I don't know, dimensions of light or something like that. But I want to try and bring down to earth the idea of dimensions for you just now. So the physical dimension is the one that you can feel in your body. Okay, so you can, if you turn your attention to it, you can feel the chair against your bum and back just now. You may be able to feel the floor beneath you. If you pay attention to your breath, you might feel the air brushing against your nostrils as you're breathing in and out. That is the physical world. If you wanted to point out somewhere that you were in pain in your body, then you could just show it to me, couldn't you? If you say, you've got a sore knee, you tell me about a sore knee earlier. If I didn't know what a knee was, I could say, well, could you show me? And you could just go, yeah. And I'd be like, right, yeah, it's a knee. Okay, but now what if I want to talk about my sadness? Or my happiness, or my frustration, 
Where can I point you to? You might know what I'm referring to because you've felt those things too. But we cannot objectively point to it. So that if I don't know the word for sadness, I can't share with you how I feel. I might be able to pull a face and you might be able to try and guess, but you might equally be wrong. I'm not going to be wrong if you point to your knee and I'm like, right, it's around the knee somewhere. But when we're talking about feelings, then it's different. What about thoughts? What about if I want to show to you the meaning of politics or the meaning of philosophy or existentialism or spirituality or what the word alien means? There's nowhere that I can point to in this physical world that will help you understand that. But if I use words in a particular way, you might go, ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. I can see that. I can see that. Because that is in the dimension of the mind. And we all navigate the mind all the time. In fact, the mind is the best example of understanding dimensional interaction or the difference between dimensions because we use phrases that none of us disagree with, like, I can't see where you're going with this. Or, yeah, I think I can see your point, but I have a different point of view. And phrases like this all denote a location, direction, and an object that we can agree that we're looking at. That's why you can say, I can see your point of view, but I have a different one. And you may find that when you're speaking to people or, or listening to somebody, if you're listening intently to somebody, then the world, the physical world, might go a little bit blurry as you start to go, yeah, 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 yeah. I can, see, I can see what you're talking about. Have you ever found yourself doing that? And what happens is, your eyes will glaze a little bit, and you might start nodding or shaking your head, but certainly, your attention on the world around you will fade as you pay attention to what's going on in mental space. Is that familiar to people? Because I'll bet all of you have done that in your life. It's how conscious it is. That's when you're navigating the mental plane. That's you navigating the mental dimension. And all the other spiritual dimensions, and alien dimensions, multi-dimension, fifth dimension, they're all beyond that. I just want to talk about the ones that we all navigate every day that uh, show that we can share experience in different planes from just the physical, and that is multi-dimensional. You're all multi-dimensional beings. The mind is not in the same realm as the emotions, and nor will it ever be. Your emotions is not in the same realm as your physical body, and nor will it ever be. And that's what makes them dimensions. It's like oil and water. They might be able to cohabit and sit next to each other, but they will never become each other, ever. Okay, so when I met the parasite in my mind, that was, uh, that was quite a revelation, I'll tell you. Because I found that <laughs> it, 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 it was tricking me into thinking that I was it, or that it was me. And it was an incredible revelation that changed my life, really. And that's what I want to share with you tonight. And this, the stuff I have here tonight is to help you deal with any parasites you might have in you. Um, but what's staggering to me is um, the sophistication. Now, it might sound a little bit strange to some of you just now, but I want to show how, pa how parasites are well understood in other species, but to get a sense of how they work in us, we'll watch a little clip if that's all right. Can we watch the first clip, please? So has anybody here come across cordyceps fungus before? Cordyceps fungus. Have you heard of it as a benevolent thing or as a bad thing? Okay, we'll get on to that in a minute. Let's look at how cordyceps has been known about for years.